understanding the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I'd like every one of us to set our hearts aright. Because in this month, I see the Spirit of God manifesting in a brand new way in our lives. If you believe, say loud amen. I said, if you believe, say loud amen. It is clear from our experiences that what most believers know about the Holy Ghost is power. That is what most believers understand when they talk about the Holy Spirit. And it is not incorrect. The Holy Spirit represents power. Is the fountain of power. Is the one that is the power of God in person. And we know this from scriptures because the Bible tells us in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Look at what it says. And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of power. He is the spirit of power. Everywhere you see manifesting among other things, you see the manifestations of the power of God. So it is not incorrect, but it is incomplete. The Bible makes us understand in the book of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 and 2. When we are introduced to the seven spirits of God, look at this closely. It says, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And what will be upon this? He said, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. If you look at this picture, there are seven spirits classified or seven manifestations of the spirit classified. The first one he called there, he said, the spirit of the Lord. That is the one that refers to power. The spirit of the Lord. That's the one referring to power. The Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter 4, for example, and verse 18, Jesus speaking, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. That talks about empowerment. He has anointed me. So the spirit of the Lord refers to the spirit of power. But that is one over seven of what we have there. Because we are told that besides the spirit of the Lord, it says we have the spirit of wisdom and understanding. We have the spirit of counsel and might. We have the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So power is a part, but power is not all. Power is one over seven of the manifestations that we see there of the spirit of God. From scriptures we are made to understand that there are diverse manifestations, diverse administrations, diverse operations of the Spirit. First Corinthians chapter 12, beginning from verse 4 to 7. Look at what the Bible tells us there. It tells us there, it says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. It says there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. He said there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Different manifestations, different administrations, different operations, but all of them, all of the same spirit. So according to scriptures, we are made to see very clearly that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, manifests himself in diverse manners. One of them is power, but the others must also be carefully examined. And we discover that the summary of all the other operations, manifestations, and administrations of the Spirit is what we call the Spirit of Grace. The Spirit of Grace. The Bible makes us to understand this very clearly in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 29. Look at what the Bible tells us here. It says, of how much sorrow punishment suppose ye that he be thought worthy 
that shall he be thought worthy who had trodden under the foot underfoot the son of god and has counted the blood of covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace so there is what the Bible refers to as the spirit of grace. And that is the summary of all of the various manifestations of the spirit. So there is the spirit of power. And then there is the spirit of grace. I remember from the testimony of Paul. He said, I'm what I am by the grace of God. Grace is the, is the maker of destiny. Grace is the decorator of destiny. Grace is the one that colors destiny beautifies destiny elevates destiny for somebody hearing me this afternoon as the spirit of grace begins to manifest in your life and my life i see our destinies being decorated if you believe it say loud amen i said if you believe it say loud amen if you believe it say loud amen this is so important from scriptures, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. He said, let's come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help. So the comprehensive help of God is found in the operation of the grace of God. I pray again that for each one of us, particularly in this month, where God has spoken that I will not leave you helpless, the help of God will locate each one of us. By the operation, manifestation, and administration of the Spirit of God, the help of God will locate each one of us. If you believe it, say loud, amen. Now, the question is, why do we need the Holy Spirit? Why do we need him? Why is he necessary? We must understand that according to scripture, he is our very present help in time of need. Very present. Very present. In time of need. In Psalm chapter 46, the Bible tells us there, and verse 1, it said, God is our refuge and is our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. You see, we discover that in the world we live in, so many people are looking for help everywhere. And they believe that their help, as it were, is in one man, one woman, or whatever the case may be. But I tell you that no matter how well intending any human helper may be, they cannot be very present or absolutely present in the time of need. In the hour of trouble, you need a helper that is always available. No matter how interested anyone may be in the affairs of an individual's life, they cannot always be available. I remember some years ago, I was, you know, privileged to be ministering and I said something. I said, there are some people here who think, oh, I, 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 you know, if I need help, I can simply just call pastor and pastor will pray for me. I said, look, don't put your trust in calling the pastor to pray. And I said, jokingly, I said, because you may pick up your phone and discover there is no network. And a woman was in that service that day and she laughed. Ah, how can there be no network? Trusting that no matter what will happen, there will be network. Because you see, this was in a foreign land where things work well. So on Friday, the same week, she had a crisis. Was taken to the hospital. She picked up her phone to call my number and there was no network. That was the day she recognized that, look, I need to look to the ultimate helper. She looked at her phone. No network to call. So she looked to the one who does not need network to call. Lord, help me. When your helper does not need network, things will always work for you. There was no network to call physically, but there was a present helper spiritually, and he brought her out of that destruction. I pray for each one of us today that this very present helper Every situation you may have found yourself in, it will rescue you from it. If you believe it, say the loudest, amen. I said, if you believe it, say the loudest, amen. If you believe it, say the loudest, amen. It's a very present help in time of need.
Now, all through this month, we are going to be examining, examining various operations, manifestations, administrations of the Holy Spirit that you and I need to be acquainted with in order to enjoy the best of our adventure here on the earth. And this afternoon, we are going to be looking at the first of them that we are looking at this month, and that is the spirit of revelation. Say with me the spirit of revelation. Say it louder, the spirit of revelation. Ephesians 1 verse 17 and 18, Paul the apostle speaking, he said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So according to scripture, there is what the Bible refers to as the spirit of revelation. Quickly, what is revelation? It is, it is being able to see what the word is saying. Revelation is being able to see what the word is saying. If you look at what we saw in that scripture, it said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ will give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. It is being able to see what God is saying. It is not just hearing what God is saying. It is not just reading what God is saying. It is not just writing what God is saying. But it is seeing what God is saying. There is a point of understanding that we call sight. Where a person comes to the place that he says, I see. What does it mean? It means what he has been hearing before. What he has been reading before has become real to him. I see. That is what you call revelation. It is coming to the point of sight concerning any word from God. It's important to note that everyone can hear the word of God. Everyone can read the word of God. Everyone can write the word of God, but not everyone can see the word of God. Being able to see what God is saying is what we refer to as revelation. And it's important to note that the Holy Spirit is our access point. He is our helper in accessing the revelation of the word. He's our helper. In the book of John chapter 14 and verse 26, look at what the Bible tells us here. John 14, 26, he said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He shall teach you all things. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, look at what the Bible says. It says, But God has revealed them unto us, by his spirit. For his spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the deep things of God. So it will take the Holy Spirit to gain access to the revelation of the word. If we jump in that same scripture to verse 12 to 14, look at what the Bible tells us here. He said, now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. He said in verse 13, which things we speak not in the wisdom that man's, that, that man's wisdom teacher. He said, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14, he said, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. He said, for their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. It is possible to be intellectually sharp and spiritually dull. It's not enough to depend on one's intellect. The intellect is helpless when it comes to accessing revelation. It's so important for you and I to understand this. When it comes to the subject of revelation, there must be a dependence on our helper, that is the Holy Ghost, in order to extract the details from the depth of God. I put it this way. What a rig is, to collecting oil from the depths is what the Holy Ghost is to collecting revelation from the word. You can't 
extract the revelation required to revolutionize your life without the instrumentality of the Holy Ghost. You can't. It is the principal instrument required for accessing revelation. I pray this afternoon for each one of us that by the encounter we are having today with the Holy Ghost, I see him coming afresh to extract the revelation that will revolutionize our lives. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. I said somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. Somebody believe it, say the loudest, amen. Somebody believe it, say the loudest, amen. Without him, what is freely given, yes, is freely available, but it's not obtainable. It cannot be taken delivery of. Now, think about this in our great nation here. Certain parts of our nation have been blessed with resources. Free resources. Nobody paid for the oil that flows under the south-south of our country. They met it there. So it was freely given. But they needed equipment to extract what was inside. And you discover that because those who lived there didn't have the equipment. Those who didn't live there came with their equipment, collected it, extracted the wealth, and are now helping the people who it was freely given to. Why? Because they didn't have what it takes. It is possible to you for you to have things freely given by God and yet be begging for what is your own. Say again with me, Holy Spirit of God, grant me access to revelation. Say it again. Holy Spirit of God. Grant me access to revelation. So it's our, it's our helper in granting us access to revelation. So that we are not begging for our rights. So that we are not crying for our rights. But we are taking possession of our rights in redemption. I see that becoming somebody's experience in the name of Jesus. You believe it? Say it loud, amen. Also from scripture we discover that the Holy Spirit is the messenger of the covenant who unveils the tables of the covenant to the believer. I love this. He is the messenger. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 to 3. The Bible refers to him there as the messenger of the covenant. He said, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. The Lord whom you seek, he will suddenly come into his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. He said, behold, he shall come and shall say the Lord of hosts. Verse 2. He says, but who may abide the day of his coming and who will stand when he appears? For he's like a refiner's fire and like fuller soap, he will purify the sons of love Levi. He is a refiner's fire. So that's speaking about the Holy Ghost. He said when he comes, he will come as the messenger of the covenant. What does that mean? It means he will open the tables of the covenant to us. And we know that the covenant is a spiritual deal that is based on well-defined terms and sealed with an oath. What does that mean? It means that the Holy Ghost is the one who opens our eyes to see what to do from the word to get what the word has to offer. He opens our eyes. He opens. So it doesn't just show us the promises. It shows us the conditions. The messenger that unveils the tables of the covenant to us. Shout hallelujah. God's servant shared in the first service when he said, talked about his experience. How that the Lord opened up his eyes. The spirit of God opened his eyes to see the four vital keys required for supernatural church growth. So that growth is not just a desire. Growth is not just a prayer point, but that growth was going to be enforced by taking certain specific responsibilities. You see, the truth is that the tables of the covenant is what gives you and I access to dominion in the various affairs of life. I pray again for each one of us that the Spirit of God will open our eyes to the tables of the covenant in the name of Jesus Christ. It's important to note that the degree to, of revelation in which we walk is what determines the degree of glory we command. The degree of revelation in which we walk is what determines the degree of glory that we command. Second Corinthians 3 verse 18, it says, We all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord we are changed 
into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of God. So when a man is walking in revelation, he begins to walk in glory. The glory of God begins to surround his life. And the higher the revelation, the higher the degree of glory. Glory is in weights and glory is in degrees. The Bible says there is one glory of the sun. There is another glory of the moon. There is another glory of the star. It says, and one star differs from another in glory. So glory is in degrees. And the degree of glory that anyone walks in is determined by the degree of revelation that that person walks in. So it means that the degree of glory you walk in in your career is determined by the degree of revelation you have there. The degree of glory you walk in in your marriage is determined by the degree of revelation you have there. The degree of glory you enjoy in your business is determined by the degree of revelation that you have there. The greater the revelation, the greater the glory. For somebody hearing my voice, this last part of this year will be the part of greater glory. The glory of God will envelop every department of your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said the glory of the Lord will envelop every department of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now quickly, we also discover that our access to the realm of illumination is our access to the realm of unquestionable dominion. You see, when you are walking in light, you are walking in practical dominion. You can't be tormented by the enemy. You can't be, that's why you and I require revelation. It brings us into the realm of practical dominion. John chapter 1 verse 5, it says, The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Where there is light, darkness must bow. There is no contention or contest between light and darkness. The appearance of light is the dissipation of darkness. The visitation of light is the disappearance of darkness. So it, it, is, it is what brings you and I to the realm of practical dominion. Shout hallelujah. Practical dominion. If you look at what the Bible tells us there in the book of first, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, we saw it earlier from verse 17. We take it all the way down to verse 20. Look at what it says. It said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his glory, of his calling, and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Look at verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought when he raised Jesus from the dead and set him at his right hand in heavenly places. So it is revelation that elevates you to take your position in heavenly places. Without revelation you keep struggling with demonic forces on the earth. But by revelation you take your position. Shout hallelujah. God's servant said, he was reading the book Apostle of Faith, and there he saw the testimony of Smith Wigglesworth. And he saw how that this man came out in the night with his, with, his, with his oil lamp in his hand. And he went into his living room because he was hearing some sound. And when he got there, he saw an image sitting down on his rocking chair, rocking back and forth. He looked at the image very well. And he saw that this image had horns on it, rocking on his chair. For most people, that house will be left for that occupant. They disappear on the spot. But here what Wigglesworth said. He looked at it and hissed. I didn't even know it was you, the devil. And went back to sleep. He said when he saw that, he understood what the Bible means. When it says that we are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Somebody say revelation. I said somebody say revelation. By that revelation his dominion mentality was instigated against all devils. So he said he was invited, he was, a, a, you know, a senior colleague was invited to a, a meeting that he could not go. So he asked him to represent him. And he said, when he went there, he ministered. And he said, how many of you here are witches? And they stood up. He said, no, sit down. I'm not talking about witch by accusation. I mean witch by manifestation. You are practicing. 
Not that they call you witch as an insult. Not that you ate in your dream. But you are in the practice of witchcraft. Stand up. And he stood up again. And he called one of them. He said, what do you do with the devil? He said, when we want to take blood, we get on the highway and we cause vehicles to somersault and we drink the blood of the victims. He said, how about when people like us are coming? He said, when we sense a higher power, we clear off the highway. When we sense a higher power. Now that power was the power of light. The power of light. The power of light. Anytime light meets darkness, darkness will lose its identity. So darkness goes into hiding. Everywhere light shows up. From this time onward, the light that establishes dominion comes afresh upon your life. You believe it? Say the loudest. Amen. That's what the Holy Ghost does. He brings us to the realm of practical dominion. That's why you hear him say, one million devils cannot stand on my way. It's light. And we have been seeing that light manifesting. It was that light inside him that he took to the nation of Liberia, entered into the hotel, not knowing that the queen, you know, a, 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 you know a, an occultic person, the queen of Sheba, one who was coronated in human blood three times, was inside the same hotel, was, was brought to the nation with excitement, with pomp, with pageantry, and as soon as he entered the hotel, that one sensed light has entered. They don't announce light. The arrival of light is self-announcing. Suddenly that one packed her load and ran out of the country, not out of the hotel. Ran out of the country at the instance of light. I pray again that for you and for me, this month in particular will be a month of outbreak of light. I said this month in particular, by the spirit of revelation, will be for you and I a month of outbreak of light. If you believe it, say loud amen. I said if you believe it, say loud amen. That's why God's servant has said over and again that the dominion of light over darkness is instant and unquestionable instant and unquestionable you see it's not just about having light but it's about being lighted john chapter 1 and verse 9 the bible says this is the true light that lighted every man that cometh into the world it is one thing to have light it's another thing to be lighted that is to become an illuminant where everywhere you go you yourself have become light on the basis of the things that you have received by the operation of the spirit of revelation. I pray that for each one of us, that will become our experience from this month. If you believe it, say loud amen. I said, if you believe it, say loud amen. If you believe it, say loud amen. If you believe it, say the loudest amen. That's what it takes. So we must understand that when the Holy Ghost goes into action as the spirit of revelation, among other things, he brings illumination. He brings illumination that brings us into unusual and unquestionable dominion. From this day onward, that shall become our experience. Now, quickly, the question we must address is, how do we access the flow of revelation? How do we access the flow of revelation? Number one is one must be born again. One must be born again. You can't access the flow of revelation without being born born again. In Mark chapter 4 verse 11 unto it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom but unto them that are without these things are in parables. These things are in parables. You must first be born again. That's the starting point. Without being born again you will know the stories but you will not encounter the revelation. Without being born again you will have the information but you will not have the revelation. It is impossible for any man who is not born again to search their way into insight with God. No, it can't happen. It takes being born again first to gain access. Because the Bible said the secret things belong to God. The things that he has revealed. So he's the one that will reveal them. You can't find it without him revealing them. And for him to reveal them first, 
you must be born again. Number two, one must continue to walk in the fear of the Lord. One must continue to walk in the fear of the Lord. The Bible makes us understand in the book of Psalm 25 and verse 14. We are told there, it said, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. The secret of God is with them that fear him. If you want to find God's secret, look for those who fear him. They are the ones that are custodians of his secret. All through the scripture, you discover that men who walked practically in the fear of God were individuals that were in custody, that were in custody of the secrets of God. You always found God's secret with them. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, we see how that Daniel feared the Lord. He proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with a portion of the, of the king's food. And because of his decision, the secret of God was found in, in him. Daniel 2 verse 19, he says, And the secret was revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Secrets are found with those who fear God. How about the man Joseph? Joseph was a man that feared God. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against my God? Genesis chapter 39 and verse 9. And we see also in Genesis chapter 42 and verse 18. He said, but I fear God. And as a result of that, the secret of God was found in him. So God's secrets are always found with those that fear him. Number three, one must be filled with the Holy Ghost. One must be filled with the Holy Ghost. And the evidence of that is speaking in tongues. John chapter 14 and verse 26. The Bible tells us there, Jesus speaking. He said to us, he said, but the comforter, which is the Holy whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He shall teach you all things. He shall teach you all things. He shall teach you all things. So the Holy Spirit, when he comes upon us, he comes upon us among other things as our teacher. He comes to instruct us. First John chapter 2 verse 20 and verse 27. Look at what the Bible tells us here. First John 2 and verse 20. Look at what it says. It says, but you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. Look at verse 27. It says to us, it said, but the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. That's speaking of the Holy Ghost. He said that you need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing teacheth you all things. And it's truth. And it's no lie. Even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. So the, the Holy Spirit is there to teach us. As we access the Holy Spirit, we access our ultimate teacher. Number four, one must pray for access to revelation. One must pray. Don't assume access. Pray for access. Pray for access. Every time you go before the word of the Lord, Always seek the assistance of the Holy Spirit. Ask him to show you. Ask him to teach you. Ask him to guide you. Engage with him in order to gain access to the secrets of God. This is so important and vital. I've discovered that every time you spend some time with the Holy Ghost before accessing the word of God, you ask him for help. You will see what you haven't seen before. He opens your eyes. He gives you light. Shout hallelujah. So make it a practice. You are going before the word. Oh, sweet spirit of God, teach me today. Open my eyes. You can spend some time and just pray in the Holy Ghost. As you are doing that, you are invoking his help. By the time you open the word, you begin to see light. It begins to show you what you have not seen before. God's servant has always said, this book called the Bible is the oldest book with the latest news. There is something in the world for you and I daily. It takes the Holy Spirit being requested of to access the content of this book. Shout hallelujah. So, pray for access. Pray for access. But to keep growing in revelation, one must keep engaging the truth that is already revealed to qualify for more. You don't just keep asking for more without obeying the last. Do what he has shown you already to gain access to more. 
Do what he has shown you already to gain access to more. No one keeps instructing a person who has not obeyed the last instruction. So, engage with what he has shown you and then you qualify for him to show you more. Shout hallelujah. My prayer for each one of us is that from this time onward, we will begin to engage with every instruction of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said we'll begin to engage with every instruction of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. We'll begin to engage with every instruction of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. One of us shared the testimony in the first service, so touching. She said that she had been led by God to begin to give transportation seed. So she said she was given a coastal bus from her, you know, area every Sunday. Paying for that coastal bus. He said, but when fuel subsidy came, when it was taken off, and fuel went off, she said, I didn't increase what I was given. I know it has increased, but I didn't increase it. I was still doing what I was doing before. He said, so I heard a testimony on Monday at Covenant Hour Prayer of somebody who was given transportation seed and suddenly God gave a miracle car. I said, I went before the Lord and said, Lord, I've been doing this thing faithfully from the beginning of the year. He said, the Holy Spirit said, yes, you have, but you didn't increase it. When the subsidy came, subsidy was taken off. You know transport went up and you'll be pretending like you didn't know. Lord, I'm sorry. As soon as she obeyed that instruction, she said it was 420 something that, that day. He said by 5, around 530 or so, the same day, got a call. Come to the head office. There's a new car waiting for you. 2023 vehicle. You see, the truth is this. You are not qualified until your obedience is complete. Until your obedience is complete complete. When she heard that from the Holy Ghost, she said, I paid for four. For four. And within one hour, the miracle landed. This will be a season of surprises for somebody here in the name of Jesus Christ. You believe, say loud, amen. I said, you believe, say loud, amen. Today is our covenant day of fruitfulness. Every barren area of any one of our lives shall be given away for fruitfulness today. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's important to note that when one is born again, it becomes a seed of Abraham. And that makes that person a partaker of the blessings of Abraham. We are told that very clearly in scriptures. He said that if any man is in, in Galatians 3 verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being it made a cause for us, for cause is everyone that hangs upon the tree, for that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles and that we may receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. So anyone that is born again has become a seed of Abraham and must be a partaker of the blessings thereof. As seeds of Abraham, we are redeemed to be fruitful. It's our heritage. The Bible said there will not be male or female that will be barren among us or among even our cattle. Not male or female. Barren among us or even among our... So, barrenness is not allowed around any one of our lives. No matter the department of life. We are not permitted to be barren in any area. Shout hallelujah. In the town service, God's servant, Bishop David Abiyoye said something very striking. He said that, you know, a cow was brought. Cow was brought. And the cow header, who brought the cow? He said, kill this one. This cow, has ref it, cannot, it cannot conceive. That's, we have been following this cow. This, it has refused to conceive. So this one should die. Die first. Die, that is, this cow must be killed. It's not a fruitful cow. So the header was suggesting this one is a priority for death first. Kill this one. It's useless to live. Cannot produce. But by the time it got into his house, first delivery, second delivery, because nothing is permitted to be barren around you. From now, nothing will be barren around your life. Your body will not be barren again. Your business will not be barren again. Your career will not be barren again. Your academics will not be barren again. 
your finances will not be barren again. There shall be no barrenness in any department of your life or my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. You believe God, say loud amen. I said you believe God, say loud amen. So as seeds of Abraham, we are redeemed to be fruitful. We are redeemed to be fruitful. We are redeemed to be fruitful. That means we have been redeemed from the cause of barrenness. And we must understand that barrenness is a cause. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 18. Look at what the Bible tells us there. It says, Cause shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy land, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. So barrenness is a cause. And the Bible says we have been redeemed from the cause of the law. So we have been redeemed from barrenness. The question is, what is required to be fruitful? Let's look at a few steps here quickly. Number one is serving God. If a man is born again, that's the first criteria already. But number one, having been born again, what must I do? Serving God. I must commit to serving God because it empowers us for an ever fruitful life. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 and 26. The Bible tells us there, it says, You shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Verse 26, he said, There shall nothing cast thy, thy young, nor be barren in thy land. And the number of thy days, I will fulfill. Nothing barren. No one casting their young. That is the testimony that is available for everyone that is genuinely serving God. I can't forget the testimony of one of our pastors. He said, he had, he had been waiting on the Lord for the fruit of the womb for a number of years, I think about eight years at that time. And after doing a number of tests, the doctor looked at him and said, well, you have no sperm count. So the doctor looked at him and saw that it's like he didn't understand what he was saying. What do you mean you don't have sperm count? So the doctor said, let me explain it to you. What is inside you is not sperm, it's water. You can't have a child. What you, are, what you have is not sperm, it's, it's water. It's water you are carrying inside you. So you can't have any child. He left the doctor. Went on serving God. Went on serving God. Just committed to God. One day, before we knew it, he came, Pastor, God has done it. What is it? My wife is pregnant. Glory be to God. Give birth to the first child. We are rejoicing and celebrating. Not long after that, Pastor, God has done it again. What has happened? She's pregnant again. Delivered the second child out of what they called water. And then I discovered that when God speaks, even water gives birth. Because God said to water, bring forth. And what the water do? It brought forth. So don't get carried away with what doctors tell you. Be carried away with what God tells you. And God has said, be fruitful. When God said, be fruitful, there was nothing that has given birth before. He said to the waters, let the waters bring forth abundantly. And the water began to give birth to fishes. It began to give birth to frogs. Began to give birth to tadpoles. Began to produce sharks. Began to produce all manner of creatures. He looked at the ground that has never yielded anything before. He said, now let the earth begin to yield, yield fruit-bearing seed. With fruit-bearing trees with their seed in them. And the ground, out of a barren ground, came out trees. Growing by the word of God. When God speaks, every medical verdict bows. So don't get carried away with, do with what doctors have said. Get carried away with what God has said. Just keep obeying God. Don't bother about how will it happen? How shall these things be? No. Let your eyes be focused on God. Let your eyes be focused on God. Let your eyes be focused on God. Just keep serving God. And watch what God makes of you. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Psalm 127 and verse 3, the Bible tells us there, Psalm 127 and verse 3, it says to us there very clearly, it said, children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. So the fruit of the womb comes many times as a reward for our service. As you keep serving God, you will see him rewarding you abundantly. And that will include the settlement of every case of barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, as long as we are planted in the house of God, we are ordained to continuously bear fruit. Even until old age. As long as we are planted, as long as we are rooted, we are bound to keep bearing fruit. Psalm chapter 92 verse 12 to 15, we are told there, it says, they will still bring forth fruit even in old age. And we have seen it here. Over 40 years barrenness, we have seen it terminated here. We saw a man of 77 and a wife about 68, giving birth to a set of twins. 
Why? Even in old age, he will still bring forth fruit. Even in old age. And somebody said, oh, but if, if, if at that age now, you have a child, how will you enjoy the child? Abraham had a child at 100 and died at 175. His son was 75 years old when Abraham died. That is, the Baba, his son also was a Baba by the time he died. Don't get carried away. Don't get carried away. Just keep committed. Remain planted in the house of God. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Number three. <laughs> Stay joyful. Don't let anything get you down. Stay joyful. Stay joyful. Because joy is required to secure reward from our labor. So stay joyful. I love what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 1. It says, sing, O barren, thou that does not bring forth. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that does not travail with child. He said, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord. So according to scripture, he said, we are to make sure we keep celebrating. Don't let anything get you down. Don't let the discouragement of men get you down. Don't let the comments of men get you down. Shout hallelujah. Most of the time, like God's servant said, in the first two services, he said, it's mostly darkest before dawn. So when things look bleak, is when things are about to break through. So don't get down. Shout hallelujah. I can't forget the testimony of a particular woman. This woman came from Kaduna that year at Shiloh. And I was privileged to be in the class for um, fathers and mothers of, of nations. And she received a word in that class in Acts chapter 26 and verse 8. That how should it, why should it be thought a thing incredible to you that God should raise the dead? And she took that word. And every morning she'll wake up early in the morning. And then she asked herself, if I've received my child, what do those with children do? He said, everyone with a child will wake up in the morning. They have to bathe the child. They have to wash the clothes of the child. They have to. So every morning she will wake up and begin to sing and rejoice and bathe an imaginary child. The child was not there, but she will gather the water. She will begin to tussle the water back and forth like that. She will take clothes, baby clothes, wash the clothes and take the clothes and spread them outside to the mockery of people. People will look at her. What is wrong with this woman? And she was doing that continuously, doing that continuously doing that she did it january february march nothing seemed to be showing she continued and continued she at the point she got discouraged and said what am i doing she took the water and was about to pour it away and she said she heard the prompting of the holy spirit continue don't stop it so she continued again continued again doing it refusing to let anyone's comment get her down one day she just began to have stomach pain Ah, what is going on? My stomach is aching me. Run to the hospital. I don't know what is going on in my stomach. They said, let us examine you, ma. By the time they checked her, ma, madam, you are about to deliver. She was not aware. You see, the devil wanted to steal her testimony by stealing her joy. Every time Satan wants to rob you of your smile, know that he wants to rob you of your testimony. She continued. And by the time she would complete it, she saw the testimony show forth. She came back with her child in her hand after 17 years of waiting. I'd like you to understand our God is a specialist in impossible cases. It doesn't matter what has been medically stated. It is turned around for a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we must keep rejoicing. To remain fruitful. Anna had to change her countenance before her condition would change. Keep rejoicing in order to encounter fruitfulness. Abraham had to keep rejoicing. He said he continued to give glory to God. He hoped against hope and kept giving glory to God. Keep rejoicing and you will watch your testimony delivered. Remember, as we conclude this morning, that your father, my father, is the baby maker. So we cannot afford to be baby beggars. When your father is a baker, you can't be lacking for bread. Because he's the one who makes babies, you can't be lacking for children. Therefore, get set. Everyone who is on the line for miracle children, your miracle is delivered in the name of Jesus. I said your miracle is delivered in the name of Jesus. Your miracle is delivered in the name of Jesus. Jesus, our Savior, is called the whip not master. Everywhere he went, one statement he kept making, whip not, whip not, whip not. Whip not, whip not, whip not. 
therefore whatever has been making you weep before now today is the end of it in the name of Jesus Christ that means when you live from here make sure your countenance has changed let everyone who sees you know that something has happened to you and as you do that you will see God manifest himself supernaturally in your life. Lift your hand to heaven and let's give glory to God this afternoon for his word that we have received. Father, thank you for your word that has come. Blessed be your holy name. You are worthy of praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed.